Hey, college coaches. This is Coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. We are a startup company based in Austin, Texas. We're focused on using technology to help student athletes successfully transition from high school to college and then into a career based on their major. Right now, we're focused on helping student athletes uh, connect with other student athletes that they meet and build their network out during the recruiting process and specifically helping them connect with college coaches during this COVID-19 recruiting cycle that we're in and the extended NCAA dead period, which ends tonight. Uh, we've got a very exciting prospect on the call with us today. He is from right here in the Austin area. Julian DeBerry, and I hope I said that right, is a class of 21 wide receiver from Westwood High School, uh, plays for a good friend of mine, Coach Anthony Wood. He is 5'10", 175 pounds, has a 3.3 GPA, uh, is registered at a 44840, so he has really good elite speed. And he was honorable mention all district last year. Julian, how you doing this afternoon? Good, Coach. How are you? I'm good. I appreciate you coming on the show and, and telling your story and looking forward to hearing more sure. about it. I know that you are uh, poised for a great senior year here, so let's just jump right in and let these coaches know more about you. Uh, you've got the 3.3 GPA. Uh, tell these sure. college coaches about the importance that you put on your academics. Uh, yeah, my coaches, I mean, they teach us or they preach to us every day, grades before anything. And before we get out on the field, uh, we need to handle tutorials. We need to do that, email teachers. So uh, they taught me to stay on top of my work and how to manage things. So I think it's really helped me, academics before football. Absolutely. Uh, it's, a, it's a great motto. Hey, tell us, uh, what are some of your favorite subjects in school that drive that GPA? Uh, I'm really into history right now because we're starting to pick up on new different things. Um, I really like English. Um, I'm starting to write my college essay, so uh, my teachers really helped me out on that, and that's pretty much it. Okay. How are you doing so far with the virtual learning that's going on in the district right now? Uh, it's all right. It's like we're trying to get into it. We're using different apps and stuff, but everything's going good. I'm getting the hang of it. Good. Hey, are there any favorite teachers, coaches, tr uh, tutors, counselors, APs at Westwood that you want to shout out right now that's helped you stay on the straight and narrow from an academic standpoint? Uh, yeah, my, um, my ASL teacher, Ms. Rad, she's always taught me um, nothing before, um, before academics. Before, before I step out on that field, grades come first. And no matter who you are, it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, grades always come first. And she's the main teacher who's taught me that. And I think I just owe a lot to her. Okay. Anybody else besides that teacher? Uh, coach Wood, my receivers coach. My receivers coach, for sure, he stays on me. He doesn't okay. let me, he doesn't let anything slide. Good. Hey, I know you're going into your senior year. I know we had a very interesting COVID-19 environment. And, uh, have you uh, rescheduled your SAT or ACT, or do you have an, a, a score uh, on record already? Um, no, I'm, um, I'm ready to reschedule my ACT because I voided my SAT, so I'm ready, uh, I'm getting prepared to take the ACT. Okay, good stuff. Hey, one of the things college coaches want to know about their prospects, Julian, is their learning style. Tell these coaches what kind of learning style you have. Are you more verbal, visual, or hands-on? Uh, I like to be more hands-on, but I can do visual. Um, I'm doing really good working here at home, so uh, I'm learning how to manage new things, different things, so. I think um, I'm ready to adapt to anything, so. It's good to know. Hey, let's, uh, let's change gears here. Let's get to know you personally. Uh, tell us about your family, your mom and dad, what they do, and, and, and if you have any siblings, are you, the, are you the baby, are you the oldest? Give a little bit about your background. Uh, yeah, um, so I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, and I ended up moving here in fifth grade. Uh, my mom moved us out here, me and my brother. Um, more opportunities. Uh, she found us an amazing school to go to, and she's still in school herself. She's getting her, med her medical degree. And uh, I have an older brother. I'm the youngest. Uh, he goes to Blinn Community College, and he's studying um, criminal justice. So, yeah, so I'm trying to, I think I'm going to go into that too, try to follow him. What is it about criminal justice that uh, piques your interest? I'm never, I just like to help people. I want to try to do something new. Um, try something, just do something more. I like to be a part of something bigger than myself. 
I like it. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what do you like to do when you're not working out and you're not playing football? What are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do when, in the little spare time that you have? I, uh, me and my friends, uh, we hang out a lot. We find different things to do, whether it's go eat or we're going to the lake or we're uh, riding scooters downtown. Uh, I play a lot of video games, a lot of Madden, FIFA. I'm on Call of Duty a lot, a lot of 2K. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm pretty uh, pretty simple guy. Okay, well, you mentioned video games, so it begs the question: Are you are you giving L's? Or are you taking L's? Oh, I'm always giving L's, Coach. <laughs> All my friends know this. All my friends know. Okay, I believe you. Hey, uh, for college coaches that want to get to know you better after you have this great senior year coming up, uh, what tell them what social media apps they can find you on? Are you a Twitter guy, Instagram, Snap, TikTok? I'm uh, more of a Twitter guy. I'm on there a lot. I'm usually posting highlights or anything to do with um, our Westwood football team. And, um, yeah, that's usually where you can find me. I, I keep that thing updated, so. Okay. Hey, tell these coaches uh, also personally, uh, what about your music taste? Uh, who are some of your favorite artists? What kind of music do you listen to? Um, I listen to a lot of rap, like, before, like, pregame stuff. I listen to a lot of Lil Baby, Gunna, um, a lot of Drake. Um, Meek Mill, a lot of like new rappers, um, like Travis Scott, he's a big one. Just stuff like that, just stuff like to get me going in the morning. I listen to a lot of Rod Wave now. Okay, so. all right, respect that. Hey, uh, tell us, do you have a favorite uh, author or actor or actress or athlete that you look up to? Um, I mean, I really follow after LeBron, just like from what's going on now. Uh, he's mm -hmm. really like showing the way for us, so. Okay. Just doing like a really big leader stepping up. So it's good yeah. to like so see something like that. Yep, absolutely. Hey, tell us, uh, what is your all-time favorite football movie? Uh, remember the Titans. Coach Wood really okay. sink that into our heads. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, what about uh, do you have another one that's kind of close to your top favorite? Um, there was one called Radio. That one yeah. was a oh, really yeah. good one. Yeah. I remember that. Okay. Cuba Gooding Jr., yeah, that's a good movie. Yes, hey, Julian, I call this my dream scenario question. Let's say you have four great years in college and you find yourself in New York City for the NFL draft. Who is sitting at your table waiting for the commissioner to call your name? Uh, I got to have my grandmother, who's always been there and supported me, my mother, my, my brother, and of course I have my dad. Okay, good stuff. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, what are you doing to give back to your community here in the Austin, uh, Westwood area? Are you a part of your church? Are you working with nonprofits? What are you doing to give back? Um, I go to church every Sunday. Well, it's virtual now, but um, we do a lot of, like, community stuff. Um, we're trying to plan something to help out the Black Lives Matter, whether it's, like, um, standing outside with signs or collecting donations. So we're trying to figure out different things to help out. I like Whatever it. Helps. Socially conscious. I like that a lot. Uh, using your brand as an athlete to make a difference. Uh, that's big time. Uh, Julian, tell us, football is going to come to an end one day. I always tell the athletes this. Uh, what do you want your life to look like personally and professionally once football is over, whenever that is? Um, I just want to feel satisfied at the end of the day. Um, I just want to know, like, everything that I put in up to that point, that I've given everything that I've gotten, uh, I put in everything. I've made sure everything was going to be right on point. So uh, I think at the end, I want to feel like I've done everything I could. I didn't leave anything on the table. Okay. For the coaches that will watch the recording of this, of this, uh, this interview, this podcast, tell them one thing that if somebody wants to get an advantage in recruiting Julian DeBerry, what's the one thing that they need to mention during the recruiting pitch? What's the, the one thing you said, hey, if they mention this, that school is going to jump up to the top five on my list? The speed. Okay. The speed. I think what I can do with the speed is just a lot of people can't do it, Coach. Yeah. No, your, your so, speed jumped off the screen when I watched your video many times and evaluated so, you. Uh, if somebody takes a bad angle, you, you make them pay. And it's actually a good transition. Let's get right into the recruiting now. And so you talked about your speed. Tell us about some of the other – what are your other strengths – uh, as a receiver, and what are some of the things you're working on going into your final senior year? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm good at finding open spaces on the field. So I never try to um, – I try to get to the open field. So wherever RJ needs me to be, that's where I try to be. Uh, whether it's quick game, he needs the ball, like, in my hands now. 
because they're like coming really fast. I do that for them. Anything that they need, uh, I'm willing to go deep. I'm willing to come across the field. I'm willing to run the ball. I'm willing to get in the backfield. Whatever they need for me to do, I'm willing to do. You know, Julian, one of the things that jumps out to me also, besides your speed and your videos, is the fact that you don't like running out of bounds. There's there's several exactly. plays of you close to the sidelines, and you're looking to cut back and get another two, three, five, fifteen yards. Tell us about that mentality that you have as a receiver. Yes, sir. Um, when my coaches preach to me, they always tell me to get down, but uh, I feel like um, once I get in the open field, I feel like no one can stop me. So I feel like I'm not going to go down easy just because someone just puts their hand on me. I'm going to try to break through and get an extra three or four yards. Even if I'm going down, I'm going to reach for an extra yard. Whatever yeah, we can do to get close to the touchdown. Yeah, that's no, good to know. Hey, obviously you mentioned R.J. Martinez. We had him on our podcast uh, back when we started way back in April. Big fan of his. Tell us about the excitement uh, that you have playing with R.J., now one of the top receivers in the state of Texas. I mean, what kind of numbers are you thinking about putting up with, with, with that quality of a quarterback? Uh, yes, sir. Man, have been talking. We're going for 1,000 plus. We're going okay. to sell another record. Uh, yeah, I mean, R.J., um, he holds us accountable, all the receivers. Uh, he makes sure we're where we're supposed to be, uh, especially if it's getting extra practice, uh, just going out right after or staying after practice. Or if he wants to watch extra film, he'll tell us to get on Zoom. Or if he say he wants to meet with us, um, whatever it takes, RJ knows how to put somebody, like hold somebody to count, accountable. Yeah. I like playing with Sh him. Shout out to RJ, who recently uh, committed yeah. to Northern Arizona. We're very proud and happy for him. And uh, hopefully we're going to see you put up some productive numbers and see more offers come your way also. Hey, let me ask yeah. you, as we talk about that, uh, Julian, tell these coaches who will watch this video, uh, what separates you from other receivers in the class of 21 besides your uh, speed? Just, I can catch on the run. Uh, I can line up in the backfield. I can play on defense. I can play corner. I can play safety. Wherever you need me to be, I can play. I'm not a Pacific player guy. Um, I can do everything. Julian, do you also play a game? Obviously, I know that Coach Wood likes to utilize speed all over in all three phases of the game. Are you also playing a role in special teams? Are you part of the return game? Are you a gunner or, or what? Uh, yes, sir. I'm a right gunner on um, punt team, and I'm on the uh, special teams. I'm on the house party receiving team. Okay, good stuff. Hey, tell us, you know, you mentioned a little bit earlier, but one thing coaches want to hear about is your relationship with your high school coaching staff. Uh, tell them a little bit about your relationship with your position coach and your head coach, which I think in this case might be the same person. Um, my receiver coach, um, Coach Daling, uh, he's really a role model for me. Ever since he stepped in to become my receiver's coach sophomore year, uh, he's always um, been that father figure while I'm at school. Uh, he makes sure I'm okay. He checks on me every day, whatever I need. Um, I really think of him as a father when, I, uh, when I'm at school. And Coach Wood, he stays on top of me. That's, I mean, he's the man. You got a little yeah. coach wood. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, so tell us as we talk about recruiting now, uh, tell these coaches, you know, what's been your recruiting experience? Who have you heard from? Who do you want to hear from? Uh, and, and just overall, you know, what, do you, what are you expecting from recruiting going into your senior year? Um, my senior year, um, I really stepped back. Um, like I was getting recruited early, uh, early in the, the virus spectrum and I was sending out film, I was talking to coaches. Uh, I was talking to UTPB for a while, um, Trinity, uh, Incanted Ward, Lamar, like schools like that. Um, and then I'm not um, like the interest just went away. So I just went like focusing on my craft. Um, I picked up more days for RJ, just focusing on the season now. So I really like try to leave the recruiting to the side and focus on like our main goal. And we're, we're trying to get to the playoffs. We want to get to that state championship. So uh, whatever happens on the way there, and, it happens. Now, Julian, I think that's absolutely the right attitude to have. I mean, obviously, we didn't have a normal recruiting cycle with camps and combines and being on campus and, and all and seven on seven and all that stuff. But you got the right focus here. Control what I can control is what I tell players. Yeah. I mean, become the best player you can be and have a great first few games. And I guarantee you, yeah. you know, game recognizes game. Coaches will see that and you'll be right back at the top of the list. And we'll, we'll do our best to make sure of that. Um, sure. Tell me a little bit about um, – you know, what is your, have you and your parents sat down, you and your mom, and, and, and talked about the, your criteria for what school you will select over the next six to nine months and where you'll, where you'll spend your next four years in college? Um, yeah, um, I told her I really want to stay, like, close to home. So I'm looking at quite a few Texas schools, Texas Tech. Um, I'm doing a resume for Texas State also, U of H, 
just like some schools like that, Texas A&M. So okay. I'm trying to stay close to home. And, and what, is your, what is your list of important things that will help you decide what school you'll commit to? Is it uh, obviously it isn't just from home. What about your major? Is it going to be their scheme? Is it going to be, uh, you know, what's important to you when you make that selection? Um, Sports-wise, it's just um, are they willing to work together? Like, are they willing to come together for one goal? I want them to do, put everything else to the side and just be here to be that one goal. Um, I think just a team that's just holding each other accountable. I want to be a part of something that just bi that's bigger than me. Someone who's going to tell me if I'm doing something wrong or, or if I need to, or if I'm doing something good. I don't want to just be a part of a team that's just all wrong and, oh, they don't really care that much. They're good with like a five and five team. I like being with a team who has goals. So whatever okay. they need me to be, that's what I like to be. I like it. No, that sounds really good. Hey, tell us, is there a certain receiver in the college or pro level that you look up to that you try and pattern your game off of? And who is that? Um, I really stick to the Texas receivers. Uh, from Since I've been watching football since my freshman year, I've been watching like a lot of Texas high school receivers. Garrett Wilson, Jalen Ellis, um, Casey Washington. Uh, the, a lot of kids from Stony Point who's graduated. Um, I watched a lot of Deuce Vaughn, a lot of his like running drills. Uh, I, I pattern my game off of those, um, off of those guys. Um, they've actually been there. They've actually done it at the high school level, and they've done it at a at a really good at a really good level. So I mean, I try to I look at their drills online, and I try to do exactly what they're doing. Or if I see them run the stick route this way, I'll try to do exactly how they do it. So I try to pattern my game off the guys who I've actually seen do it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's smart advice. I mean, obviously, you want to be successful, find somebody successful and do what they did. So you've got a very great uh, methodology in doing that there. Um, sure. you know, coaches want to understand how players deal with adversity because the game is nothing but adversity. There's highs and there are lows. One minute you're catching a winning touchdown, next minute you're dropping one you should have caught. Tell these coaches about a time in your life, either personally or dealing with football, where you had to overcome some type of adversity. Um, yeah, my sophomore year, um, I started off um, really rough. Uh, coach, they were giving me playing time, and I just wasn't making good plays. And my coaches, they always preach to me short-term memory. If you drop a pass, you have to come back to it. Or they're going to give you a coach would. If I drop a pass, he's going to give it to me again. So I have to be ready for it. He's like, okay, you're going to always drop one, but how can you react to it? Can you come back and make a big play? So it's not about, like, what you did. It's how you come back from it. So they, yeah. that's what my coaches really have taught me. All right. I like it. Hey, do you tell these coaches, why do you love playing the game of football? Uh, I like being part of, I like being with people. I like being a part of something bigger than myself. I like working with other people. Um, I like um, coming together and just doing one thing. I like being a part of brothers. Um, I just like working out. I like playing football. I've always loved playing football since I was young. My cousins, they've taught me, and I've just picked it up from them since then. You know, Julian, there's, there's a lot of, obviously, there's a lot of high school players that want to play at the next level, but the numbers say only 8% of high school football players in the country, 8% will go on and play at some level in college. Tell these college coaches why you, you, you will be part of that 8%. Uh, I'm accountable. Uh, I'm, you can hold me accountable. Whatever you need, I can do. Uh, I'm willing to go to a program is, um, that's going to be a part of wherever they need me to be, that's where I want to be. So I'm all about um, the coaches that they say, oh, we need a player who can just be a special teams guy, or we need a guy who can play safety, or we need a guy who can back up this receiver, or who can come in and start when this receiver leaves. I'm willing to be that guy. I'm willing to work for a spot. Um, nothing's going to be given to you. So I'm willing, wherever you need me to be, I'm willing to earn a spot. You know, Julian, I always tell athletes, I always tease them when I was coaching college and say, hey, are you a receiver? Or are you a football player? And the reason why I ask that, because it sounds like you've got that right attitude that you've played. I got coach, I'll play receiver, I'll play DB, I'll play on special teams. To me, it's the attitude of I'll do whatever you want me to do if you're going to pay for my college education. Is that, is that something that you also, you feel like that also or no? Yes, sir. I'm a team player. Yeah, I like it. No, I like that stuff. Okay. Hey, tell me, um, you're obviously a good athlete with good size and tremendous speed. What other sports have you played during your time at Westwood? Uh, I run track. Um, I run the four by one, the four by two, and that's pretty much it. I'm a track player. I mean, I'm a track runner also. What is your uh, PR in the 100 and 200? So these coaches know. 
Um, my 200, um, I think I ran uh, a low 22 or a low 20, wow. or I think like a 2250. Okay. I think that was my best. And then after that, we just ran relays. So we won a couple of meets and then we lost a couple of meets, but and that's pretty much it. I'm really more of a relay guy. Okay. And then obviously college coaches love athletes that run track. Uh, tell us one thing you've learned in track that makes you a better football player. Staying low, explosiveness. You're never going to do anything if you're standing straight up. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about pad level. I like it. Hey, as we finish up here, um, tell us how you define leadership and how do you plan on leading in your senior year at Westwood this season? Yes, sir. Um, well, this year uh, is my senior year. I think everybody needs to be held accountable. Um, we have – there's no time to waste. I mean, we, we've already wasted enough time. I've told – there are um, other receivers that uh, if you get better today. If you don't have tomorrow. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. So right. uh, we strive on getting better every day. We're, um, we're striving to be the best receiving core in Texas at Westwood. And that's what we preach. That's what we work. Uh, we work every day to be the best. And that's just what we go off of. Okay. And it doesn't matter. Right. It, can be, um, it can be the youngest guy in the room. Whoever wants to be the voice in there can do it. You don't have to be the but oldest players guy. like yourself. I like you know you're senior now. I would always like to ask the question: What's one piece of advice Julian would have given himself now, back when he was a freshman that he didn't know then? Um, just be more confident when you start off. Like everything's not going to go like the way you want it. Like sophomore year, I thought I was going to be able to be like this great player, come into a spot where I'm able to. I have a chance to start as a sophomore. And I was given that opportunity, and it just didn't go the way I wanted. So I worked really hard that summer with RJ and my other trainers and receivers. And my junior year came out better. So it's just um, only control what you can control. Just be ready at all times. You never know when you're going to get a chance. Like a receiver goes down, and it can be your chance. You never play like a two. Always play like a one. Ah, I like it. That's great advice. Hey, last question here. We'll finish up. Uh, coaches want to understand about your competitive nature. Uh, tell these coaches uh, how competitive you are and, and why you love to compete. Well, I work hard, Coach. Um, I train every day. I do whatever I have to do. I think I'm the best. If, if someone presses me, I tell RJ, I just tell him to throw it up. I mean, I, just, I think a corner should know by the film. I mean, no one should ever press me. You know, I just have that confidence. I worked hard. Uh, the amount of work I put in, I think I should. I walk around with that confidence that no one can guard me. Good stuff. Well, hey, Julian, I've been watching you. I'm excited to see you. I'll finish up with this. And we talked about it earlier, the elevator pitch. You know, we've heard a lot of great information and we've learned about you here in the last 20 minutes. But tell these coaches in 30 seconds why they should recruit you and what you're going to bring to their program. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to bring leadership. Wherever you need, I can do. If you need me to play special teams, like I said earlier, I can do that. If you need me to be a main blocker guy, I can do that. Uh, if you want to give the ball off quick, a quick game guy, I can do that. Whatever you need, I can be. Um, I'm not about my stats. I mean, stats don't really matter. It's about getting that big goal, a championship. And I think I'll do whatever it takes to get to that point. Yeah, I like it. Julie, I'm a big fan. I've learned more about you. I've been watching the last couple of years, but I'm really excited to see what you and RJ, what kind of numbers you put up in a very difficult yes, district this year with Huddle Attic. Continue to be safe yes, and work hard. You'll see me at practice this week, man. Take care of yourself, and uh, if you need anything, let me know, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. All right, man. Have a great evening. Thanks. You too.